Let me tell you the story of how I built my classic Mustang from start to finish. It all began with a challenge that I gave you to determine the project we do to this car. There's just so many different engines, so many different options that we could go with. The Gen 3 Caliute, the Gen 2 Caliute. I'm also going to check out a 428 Cobra Jet right now as we speak. I posted two videos back to back and I said whichever video gets more views, that's the one we're going to do. 428 Cobra Jet versus a Caliute. And you guys decided it a copy swap. Little did I know that was the start of the 15 month journey of literal blood, sweat, and I'm not gonna lie, some tears were involved. So let's get down to business. I do wanna start off by plugging my merchandise for this project. This is the first design. I'm also gonna put the other design here. Make sure to check it out in the bio. Make sure to grab some merch. I'll greatly appreciate it, guys. All right, now let's get down to business. After delaying the project for some times, I kind of forced myself to get into it. So after doing one last burnout, I literally went out with a bang because I broke my rear dip doing a one wheel peel. Perfect excuse to do a motor swap, am I right? This was the first time I took out the motor all by myself. Did I know what I was doing? No. Did I just yank everything out and cut whatever I had issues with without any worry in the world? Absolutely yes. Motor's out. 289 V8. Not too shabby here. All out. I have a huge mess to clean up right now. But we did it. The motor was pretty easy to take out, but that's not just the motor we're taking out. We also have to tear down the full entire suspension, brakes, all the accessories to it, and a full entire rear end until we are left with a shell on stands. Talking about stands, huge shout out to Quick Jacks for literally supporting my Mustang in the air for 15 months. These jacks made it 100 times easier to do the project. We finally got the full disassembly, full eight hours, took me two days, four hours from 12 to four the first day and then 12 to four the second day. And uh, now she's looking pretty good. Now that we got the car stripped down to the show, we need to cut the car in half. Coyotes don't belong in these cars, obviously. The dual overhead cam makes the motor huge and the engine bay of the 1960s Mustangs are small. The strut towers are what's stopping the engine from just dropping right in. You know what that means? I have to cut the car. Not only did I not know how to do a Coyote swap on a classic Mustang, but I also don't know how to weld and fabricate. This is getting a lot harder than I thought. So I need to find a welder and fabricator. That's where my buddy Bryce came into play. Huge shout out to Bryce for helping me out with this build. So we got to cutting the struts off and met our next challenge with rust. Here are the final pieces to, that we got cut out of the classic right here. Super excited to see this all out. Two strut tower braces, the under braces, and then that one goes to that strut tower. So essentially four pieces is all we needed to get to this point, which as you guys have seen, we now have our problem with rust, which is very, very common yet. We're going to work around this. But rust was no problem for Bryce as he cut and fabricated new support beams. <music> A cross member was needed to install the Coyote from Rod and Custom Motorsport. They specialize in Coyote Swap Classic Mustangs and gave me everything I needed to get the job done. I purchased their Coyote package, which included a cross member, suspension, brakes, and rear end. Bryce finished all the cutting and fabricating in the front, and it looks so good. The goal for this Mustang was to get it complete as soon as possible, so I used a rattle can truck bed liner in the engine bay just to cover the rust and maintain a tough texture to finish up the rest of the work that needs to be done with this car. My overall goal is to get it professionally painted, but that would have extended the project at least three months and a minimum of $10,000, but I didn't want any more delays that I already had. Plus, with fresh paint, I was bound to mess it up somehow with all the additional work needed to be done, so I just did a really quick $100 truck bed liner, and it turned out pretty good. I will take out the motor again and paint the full entire car inside and out when I'm absolutely 100% done. Now that we have that, the next step that we'll be doing is the suspension and the full rest of the brakes. Time to move to the rear where we had to install the rod and custom suspension with John's 9 inch rear end and 380 gears. This is a four link suspension with QA1 coilovers. This kit was a bolt on kit or a weld on kit, but having Bryce, we decided to weld everything together, which made the rear end install actually a breeze. We have the Johns Ford 9 inch rear end with 380 gears installed. We have the QA1 coilovers, the Willwood disc brakes, and the rest of the components from Rod and Customs like the control arms and brackets and stuff like that. With that, I then did axles and brakes. Coilovers slipped on and brakes bolted right up to it. This was my first time doing a rear end and rear end brakes, and that was pretty easy. Now we need to move on to the front and install the suspension and brakes, which again, went a lot easier than I anticipated because everything just bolted up exactly how the instructions intended it to be. And here is the end result. We have the sway bar hanging. I just bolted 
lifted up the power steering, which is just simply those two long bolts on each side. I'm so glad I didn't cheap out on brakes because this is one of my favorite parts on this build. We have Willwood drilled and slotted 13 inch rotors in black and red. It's a perfect match for the car and they look sweet. And this is the end result. We got the full assembly finally together. It spins freely. This full setup looks so badass with the full black car. Cool. I think it's time to put the motor in. But remember when I mentioned I don't know how coyotes work? Well, that still hasn't changed. So I reached out for some help and that's where Edwin from Top Notch Performance came to the rescue. He helped me seal up the motor and install the clutch and transmission. The clutch setup included a ram hydraulic clutch. So a lot of math and measurements were involved to make this clutch work. After the clutch was complete, now the transmission goes right after. We had a full unit with motor and transmission. Now it's time to drop the full unit into the car. We cherry picked it and dropped it with no issues bolted it to the frame and voila, the motor is finally in. She's back in, time to tidy her up. Super excited, we finally got the Coyote back into the fastback where it belongs. Next, we needed to get the final piece of the puzzle to complete the drivetrain, which was the drive shaft. Huge shout out to Precision Shaft Technologies for making a custom drive shaft for the Mustang and getting it out in like two days. If you need a drive shaft, go with PST. All right, now the full entire powertrain is complete. Let's move on to fuel. And I'm not gonna lie, it intimidated me to the max, but did you know fuel was actually pretty easy? I got a full kit from Airmotive who sponsored the project. Huge shout out to them for sending out their E85 compatible four 60 pump return style fuel system. This fuel system is ready to support all the Coyote needs. I also got a brand new tank to install with this. We have done so much here with the Classic Fastback and we are so close, literally so close to completing this. Now it's time to do the first start. This is where Edwin really came to the rescue. He worked out his magic worth wiring the full entire system and control pack to get this Coyote starting up. The first startup went like this. It was super loud, so I equipped it to the Pipes Violator Exhaust, which was sponsored by Pipes Exhaust. Huge shout out to Pipes for always supporting me since the start of my automotive journey. Pipes is my favorite exhaust, and I think you should equip it too. Now that the motor is up and running, we have to wire the full entire car to get it straight legal. I ended up going with the American Wire Kit for 1968 Mustang, which was highly recommended on the Coyote Swap Classic Mustang Facebook forums. One thing about me though, is I absolutely hate wiring, so I sent this wiring to Edwin and he completed everything from headlights to rear lights turn signals license plate lights auxiliary lights blinkers and much much more that was the final piece before taking it out for its first drive and let me tell you it was a dream come true i drove it around a bit and had the time of my life after 15 months First drive, success. We took it around the full block. You guys have seen it all. It feels really good. The first drive was definitely a success. And now it's time to put the cherry on top with the tune. But before we get the tune, we have to say goodbye to the unicorn intake. Although it looks pretty cool, it's just not sustainable with driving. So let's go ahead and install a custom intake. And just like that, we got ourselves a nice colder intake. Lastly, I needed to get the car tuned to get it running right, so I got the car tuned by SMP here in Huntington Beach, and Sergio got the car running good. If you need a tuner for a Coyote, hit up SMP, tell him Nate Ryder sent you, and he'll get you dialed in. Finally, we got the Coyote Fastback back up and running. Check this thing out. Everything went very well to plan. Now that the Mustang is up and running, I'm starting to make this a better car. I coated the full undercarriage, adjusted ride height, got an alignment, fixed a bunch of things that were just rattling like loose bolts and a lot of other things that needed to be tended to. From here on out, you'll see more videos of me upgrading this car like power steering, AC, new interior, sound system, paint, and much more. I hope you watch those videos next, so keep in touch with the build. This is my Coyote Swap Classic Mustang, and this was my journey from start to finish. Make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more. I appreciate everybody who picks up some merchandise. I hope you enjoyed the ride as much as I did. And let me tell you it was totally worth it thank you guys for your support i'll see you on the next one